Reactive training systems. Hey everyone, so I'm here in Ireland and uh, we're getting ready for a seminar that's going to be next weekend. And I've had some time to hang out with the other guys and talk a lot about training and you know just the things that seem to interest us as coaches. And one thing that seems to come up as it often does in my conversations is just this concept of individualization and just how important that is to you know actually spend the effort and individualize a training program. Uh, that's actually what your whole job is as a coach because if you can't do that then you know, a person may as well get a training program out of a book anyway. So individualization is really what sets great training programs apart from not great training programs. But there's a lot to it. You know, how do you individualize uh, a training program? You know, there's different aspects to it, and it can be a bit complicated. Now, let's add to that, you know, a, a different dynamic in that, um, there are these different blocks of time that make up your training cycle, your training career even. The most important of those training blocks, I would say, is the training microcycle. That's the foundational element of every other phase of training. A training microcycle makes up, and really the training session below that, uh, which kind of fits into the microcycle paradigm. They are what makes up, you know, the mesocycle, your training block, multiple training blocks strung together that lead into a competition, you know. And the way I see it, there's a definite interplay between these two things. You know, and most of the individualization, most of the autoregulation comes at the microcycle level. You know, we the tools that we use to individualize, you know, a training cycle or a training block or a training mesocycle, um, they aren't quite as uh, as nuanced. Uh, there's a lot more, um, I guess, art artistry. Uh, there's a lot more skill involved with the correct implementation. Um, it's still valuable, but it's think of it like building a house or building a castle even. Um, if the training microcycle is the stone with which you build the castle, uh, that has to be solid. Uh, otherwise the castles, it doesn't matter how well the castle is designed, it's not going to stand very well. Uh, so having a great microcycle is critical to the development of you know everything that comes after that. And Part of having a great microcycle is auto-regulating the training uh, to the extent that the athlete needs it and to the extent that it fits with an athlete's, a given athlete's temperament. Um, you know, for example, we talk a lot about RPE. Uh, I'm obviously a big proponent of RPE-based training, but it's not for everybody. There's definitely a, a personality that seems to work best with RPE-based training, and if you're not that kind of person, then we have to find something else. We have to find some other way to make the training fit you as an individual, uh, because that's how it has to work. You know, that's the best way that you can construct your training. Is if the training fits your temperament, your personality, your skills and abilities, and you don't try to uh, shoehorn yourself into a training program that's not really well designed for you. So the reason I wanted to bring that up today is that we're getting ready to start a uh, microcycles class. So we teach RTS Classroom. It's an online class. Um, each class is 10 lessons long and it's spread out over about three months. And there's a discussion portion, there's homework in some cases, which is optional but definitely recommended in terms of maximizing what you get out of each class. Uh, and the whole aim of Classroom Microcycles is to teach you how to make really, really great training microcycles. So if you're building that castle so that you you design a great microcycle so that the castle that you build is as strong as it can be, um, what that's going to do is it's going to lead to better progress, more sustainable progress, hopefully less injury, uh, and a higher overall peak in, in terms of your athletic career. So I wanted to tell you about that. We're going to link up to that class in the description so you can click on that and you'll see a full lesson list. Uh, you'll see registration and things of that nature. But 
I did want to leave you with something useful, with something meaningful. There are all kinds of different aspects of your training cycle that need to be customized. Uh, a couple of them that people don't think about very often are the length of the training cycle and the frequency. Uh, and specifically the frequency, with frequency I'm referring to the movement pattern frequency, not necessarily the frequency with which each muscle is trained. Um, I would expect that there's a bit of individual difference there as well, but probably not as much. Uh, it's probably not as, as wildly divergent, really. Um, so I want to focus on uh, the movement pattern frequency for right now. Some people seem to respond well to a high movement pattern frequency so that they're training the same movement pattern even to the point of having similar high specificity loads on a frequent basis. So one of my favorite examples for that at this time is Liz Craven uh, who when training up for Worlds uh, she had a 2x movement pattern frequency. Uh, so she was actually squatting about four times a week, but only two of those were competition style squatting and they were done relatively heavy. Um, that is what's really driving the microcycle frequency for someone like her. But on the opposite end of that, I've got another, uh, another lifter who doesn't respond well to that. And in fact, uh, I would go the opposite uh, and this lifter only responds, or not only responds, but responds best to a movement frequency of um, every other week. So they're only training the competition squat every other week. Now they're still doing some form of squatting, and they're still doing, uh, you know, training those muscles on a more frequent basis than every other week, obviously. But they're o they're only hitting that particular movement pattern on a, on a fairly infrequent basis. Now, if you go back even just a few years ago, I would have doubted that that was a thing that occurs very often. And in fact, it's it's not. It's not a thing that I would say occurs often. Um, more often, what we see are people that tend to thrive on uh, on a one x microcycle frequency, so that the microcycle is matched fairly tightly to the weekly rotation. But some people. Um, as you probably well know, uh, do best on a five-day rotation or even a ten-day rotation, which that's kind of a, a you know somewhere in between um, you know the weekly patterns. So it can range anywhere in between there. Uh, those are you know probably the most extreme cases that I've found. Now, as far as what works best for you, it's hard to nail that down. To be honest, it's it's not easy for me to to just sit here and give you a blanket recommendation and in fact I don't really know what mediates that difference uh, maybe it's purely genetic so it wouldn't be something that we could see but uh, I suspect that there's a way to to estimate it or ballpark it and we just maybe haven't figured that out yet um, but in the meantime you can start I would say start in the middle start by training one microcycle every week and then move from there. You know, if your uh, if your cycle length is really short, then you may want to decrease that frequency so you can stretch it out a bit longer. Or if your cycle frequency is too long, then you would increase the frequency and and watch it compress a bit. So uh, you can manipulate those types of things. And uh, not to get uh, too pitchy with you, but we do talk about these things in a lot more detail in RTS Classroom. So if, again, if that's something that interests you, I hope to see you there. Reactive training systems.